box scores never tell the whole story. But sometimes the story that they do tell is enough to make you ask, what the hell happened here? I'm not talking about the stat lines that necessarily make your jaw drop like Kobe's rigged 81 points against the Raptors or Russell Westbrook's season-long triple-double FU tour in 2016. I'm talking about the data that makes you scratch your head and wonder how something like that could even be possible. So today, we're taking a look at the weirdest stat lines in NBA history, from the bizarre to the strangely impressive to the nearly impossible. And that's coming up right after this. The next time you're playing 2K and you think you rack up some strange numbers that could only be done in the virtual world, think again because these NBA players have pulled off the weird, the strange, the incredible. And we're going to find out how. With the first look at a 5-point, 18-rebound stat line, you'd probably be more inclined to believe that these figures belong to a true glass cleaner, like Yusuf Nurkic or Costa Kufus, then all-star point guard Damian Lillard. Lillard, who's averaged just 4.1 rebounds in his career, randomly exploded for 18 boards in an overtime win against the Clippers, in which he only shot 1 for 13 from the field, including 0 for 7 from downtown. The lesson from Lillard is, if the shot's not falling, find something else to do. Hall of Fame big man Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon put up 48 points on 60% shooting in a loss to the Denver Nuggets in 1997. Doesn't sound that impressive until you factor in that he didn't make a single trip to the free throw line all night. It feels somewhat impossible that a physical center like Olajuwon could put up 40 shots without so much as a slap on the arm to send him to the charity stripe, but that's how it went down. I think it's fair to say that 1997 was a simpler time in the NBA, a time before James Harden and Hakeem's record for most points scored without a single free throw will likely never be broken. Shooter's gonna shoot, and that's what Drew Holiday proved back in 2013 when he went 2 of 24 from the field, scoring just 5 points and turning the ball over 3 times in a loss to the Charlotte Bobcats. The fact that Holiday was even able to make it to 24 attempts without getting tackled by coach Doug Collins and dragged off the floor is an accomplishment in its own right and proves that he must have been doing some good things on the defensive end to atone for his offensive calamity. However, it might not come as a surprise that Philly traded holiday to the pelicans before the next season maybe it was his atrocious eight percent from the field in that game that finally convinced them to tank for joel Embiid and ben simmons and another guy that can't shoot named fultz It's one thing to lay a goose egg every now and then in the regular season, but to open up a huge playoff series with a 0.0 rebound, 5 foul performance in a game 1 loss to the Washington Wizards in the 2014 Eastern Conference Semifinals is a feat only Roy Hibbert could successfully pull off. In nearly 18 minutes on the court, Hibbert missed both of his two shots, never got to the line, failed to put down a rebound, and committed 5 fouls before Indiana realized they were better off with him on the bench. Fortunately for Hibbert, after a good talking to from some of the Pacers veterans, he came out with a 28-point performance on 76% shooting and 8 for 8 from the line to go along with 9 boards. The Pacers eventually finished off Washington in 6 games and the 7'2 center moved on to the Lakers where he was gradually phased out of a league in which immobile centers have more and more trouble fitting in. Hibbert's numbers faded away over the last few years of his career, but that 0-0 masterpiece will live forever. Ever. To counter Hakeem Olajuwon's 48.0 free throw performance, Rip Hamilton came out in a 2005 loss to the Grizzlies and shot 0 of 10 from the field, but 14 of 14 from the charity stripe. The mass master of the mid-range had 7 trips to the foul line, and his 14 points led the Pistons on a very sad offensive night in which Tayshaun Prince paced the team with 4 makes from the floor in a 22-point loss. In a performance that James Harden would be proud of, Rip Hamilton proved that the only two lines that matter are the bottom line 
and the free throw line. When you're seven foot seven with an eight foot six wingspan like Manute Bull, your main objective on the court is to affect some shots. But the late great Bull took it to another level in the 1986 Washington Bullets victory over the Atlanta Hawks. Despite playing a total of 43 minutes, the rookie Bull only tallied four points and four rebounds to go with his gargantuan number of blocks. It looks like Bull was single-minded and the only thought he had was to send some Hawks shots into the third row. Bull owns two career 15 block games the second highest single game total in nba history behind elmore smith's 17 back in 1973 in today's perimeter oriented game we may never see that many swats again but if there's anyone to do it i put my money on oregon's bowl bowl There are players with a score first mentality, but then there's Allen Houston who had a score first, second, and third mentality. In a 2000 game against the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Knicks guard put up 37 points on an extremely efficient 16 for 20 shooting. Just sounds like a good shooting night until you keep reading the box score and notice that he put up zero rebounds, zero assists, zero blocks, and zero steals. In a game where he played a total of 37 minutes, it's nearly impossible not to record any other kind of stat, but it's even tougher not to admire Allen Houston's commitment to putting the ball in the hoop and doing literally nothing else. On the whole, Houston's career has gone largely forgotten for a player that spent 12 years in the league, made two all-star teams, and put up 17 points per game in his career on 40% from three. Oh, his backloaded contract basically ruined the Knicks. I, I remember that. Before Dennis Rodman was rubbing elbows with Kim Jong-un and advertising pot coin on CNN, he was the best rebounder in the game during his stints with the Detroit Pistons, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Chicago Bulls. On one particular night for the Spurs in 1993, Rodman failed to hit on any of his five shots from the field, scoring exactly zero points in a tight win at Charlotte. However, he did contribute 28 rebounds to help the Spurs cause, 10 on the offensive side, 18 defensive. Like Allen Houston living solely to shoot the rock, the man affectionately known as the worm lived and breathed boards. His absurd 31% total rebound percentage in this game came against dominant big man Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson, neither of whom could break double digits on the glass. Another impressive stat from Rodman was his 24-hour marriage to Carmen Electra. One is the loneliest number, right? C.J. Watson thought so and sought to achieve the elusive 6x1 stat line in a 2013 game between the Nets and the Hawks. Watson scored one point, picked up one board, had one assist, blocked one shot, got one steal, and turned the ball over one time. The only improvement would have been to fit all of that into one minute of playing time. Oddly enough, Watson's teammate Marshawn Brooks also picked up precisely one point, one rebound, and one assist in that same game, but clearly didn't have the presence of mind to pick up a steal, a block, and turnover like Watson. There's no arguing that the journeyman point guard stuffed the stat sheet in this beautiful one-off, but it takes more than one of everything to stick around in the NBA, and now Watson is one cold dude in Turkey. There are a lot of ways to mess something up in a very small amount of time. It only took one day to ruin the economy back in 1929 and the late Rajul Butler laughed at that kind of inefficiency. Back in a 2012 game between Butler's Raptors and the Lakers, Toronto trailed with 4.2 seconds left to go in the game. Butler was subbed in for the purpose of inbounding the ball, which he wasn't able to do. He couldn't find anyone open and a five second violation turned the ball over to the Lakers, at which point Butler was promptly sent back to the bench. So officially, in zero minutes of action, Butler recorded one turnover and nothing else. The Lakers went on to win the game 94-92 and Butler ended up with the strangest stat line of all time. Technically, he did not play an official DNP 
but had a stat entry despite never hitting the court. It's kind of like being fired on your day off. How the hell are you gonna get fired on your day off? Sadly, Rajul Butler was killed last year in a car accident. Rest in peace. As Benjamin Disraeli once said, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. And not that a cager is trying to deceive us with his stat sheet, sometimes you have to go back and watch a game to really get the whole story on why things shake out like they do from a numerical standpoint. And for a stat nerd like myself, I'll always find pleasure in questioning the numbers, like how Nickelback is the 11th best-selling band of all time. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to check out my bookie and use my code POINTS50 to get your bets in before and during the Super Bowl. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. I'm Five Points Vids. Actually, my name is Adam, but you, you get it. And you made it to the end of this video.